Nice to see you. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Tracy. It's nice to see some new faces. Lawrence, hi, uh, Nikki. Oh, this is great. I'm on my phone, so I'm like trying to swipe to see people and stuff. Thank you all for making it on. Um, this is Salad in a Jar. Um, hopefully you're all prepped and ready to go. I know some of you are just going to watch tonight and <laughs> I can say no, I'm not ready. Um, hopefully, um, yeah, some of you are just going to watch and just take some notes of how best to do this because Salad in a Jar is quite simple, but we obviously want them to last a week. So it's how we layer them up in the jars and things to keep them fresh. But as I said, my name's Chloe. Um, I'm the founder of The Bee Plan and, um, oh, I've been doing salad in a jars now for about four years, probably. Um, before lockdown, people used to descend on my house. Everybody bought one ingredient and we'd go home with our five meals. So it was brilliant. But then we sort of adopted the Zoom thing, which is fabulous because it means if you don't live in Tumbra Class in Kent, that's okay, you can still be part of it. So it's really lovely to have you all on. Um, the Bee Plan is a community of health nuts. We absolutely love fruits and vegetables <laughs> and we love finding health hacks and ways that we can get them into your body as easily as possible because everybody's frantic, everybody's busy these days. And um, it's actually really hard to constantly get the right amount of nutrition into our bodies. And so what we do at the Bee Plan is we work with whole food supplements. We recognize that the nutrient decline in our food and the fast paced lives these days and what's happening with toxicity means that, oh my gosh, we have to be eating like a horse with a nose bag full of fruit and veg every day, all day long. So we actually advocate our whole food capsules. Um, if you don't know much about them, please head onto our website. It's the bplan.info. And um, Jeanette, if you want to pop that in the chat box for people, if they haven't been onto our yeah. website, please do check it out but our capsules are basically 10 fruits 10 veggies and 10 berries um i've been using them for nine years my whole family take them and oh my gosh i wish i'd known about them 30 years ago because i had such horrific acne and hormone problems and a weak immune system and my health practitioner actually told me about these when i was pregnant and having a threatened miscarriage and i put them in my body and just wonderful things happen so um the b plan is all about people who love the capsules love healthy living and just want to pay it forward and salad in a jar was born out of that getting more color more whole foods into people really really easily and simply so the reason why we love salad in a jar is because it's a, a quick health hack for busy people you are going to have your lunches made up for the whole week they will stay even if you had one on monday next week it would taste like you had you made it that day um, they last so beautifully in the fridge providing that you use a glass jar because glass doesn't expand like plastic and things it's completely airtight obviously back in the war days everything was in glass jars because it's such a good way of, of keeping things fresh for longer when you buy your berries from the supermarkets your raspberries your strawberries give them a wash stick them in a glass jar and they won't look like you trod on them the next day <laughs> they will be nice and gorgeous for another week or so i've had strawberries in the fish, fridge now for a week and they just look perfect so anything you really want to preserve and keep lovely and fresh and, and crisp stick them in a glass jar um so when i said about how um salad in a jar tackles the the issues that we face now with health i just want to quickly cover that because this is the kind of stuff that we talk about and this is the stuff that i wish i'd known when I was 12, I wish I'd been taught it in school. I wish we'd been told it, you know, going through my mum's cancer journey and things like that. When we think about fruits and vegetables, why are they so important? Why do we need to be eating so many more? Because they contain your antioxidants and it's antioxidants in our plant foods that fight free radical damage. And the free radical damage is happening more and more in our bodies because we're exposed more and more to toxicity. We've got it in the air we breathe, the water we drink. We've got it in our body lotions, our shampoos, our conditioners, our antibiotics. Um, and actually our biggest, biggest output of free radical um, creation is stress. And I'm sure, you know, you all have a niggle, a health niggle, that if you get stressed, it gets worse, like migraines or IBS. For me, it's my skin. You know, if I go through a period of stress, I will get a breakout in my skin. We're all susceptible to stress. It's like, it's like the rust in the body. And the reason why I was talking about free radicals is because they're going around in our body attacking healthy cells and it's causing inflammation. Our bodies are becoming inflamed because you're damaging healthy tissue. Just like if you fell over and cut yourself, that site of injury would become inflamed. That's a, an area of protection. The body naturally protects itself. But this is happening inside, silent inflammation, and we don't know it's happening. I'm actually in some ways quite 
grateful that I wore it on my face for 20 years because it was a sign very outwardly that something wasn't right in spite of an amazing diet in spite of seeing nutritionists and trying to get to the bottom of it for 20 years and so once I understood silent inflammation it was like okay how do we tackle this you tackle it through antioxidants through diet switching off inflammation so we need a heap of fruit and veg it's not five a day in the UK we're the only country to say five most countries recommend 10 portions a day the actual science is saying seven to 13 fist size portions a day okay and a fist fist size cricket ball kind of size that is a portion all right so i'm thinking like breakfast you know you've got to have a huge plate of spinach a huge amount of avocado loads of tomatoes you know it's quite filling it's very very hard to do all those portions so 10 portions a day if you're in austria or japan it's 17 or 18 portions a day okay so we're way behind in the uk we don't even manage three a day on average OK, and it'd be interesting in the chat box for you to say how many portions you've managed on a plate today. It's hard. Yes, you can do it some days. But on other days, when you get the kids in school, you race to the office, you work through lunch, then you come home. And then in my case, it was football match, come home, quickly eat, go out to two swimming classes, get back, salad in a jar. <laughs> Life is busy. So it's very, very hard to do 70 portions a week okay but that's what we need now to switch off this inflammation inflammation is at the root cause of all your disease processes your cancers and your alzheimer's and things like acne ibs all that stuff it's inflammation if you're tired and you find yourself needing coffee in the morning or falling asleep on the sofa it's inflammation okay so really think about your portions and of course when you cram it all in these jars if you've got about 500 mil you're easily getting three portions in at lunch brilliant um, also, the beauty of your salad in a jar, and you can see all mine prep down here. When you see nutritionists, they talk about eating a rainbow, okay? Because your variety is what really, really matters. The people who study the gut health are saying that we need 30 varieties a week now to stave off disease and to keep the gut healthy. Now, in our capsules, we get 30 varieties a day. So it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner for us. But when, you, when we talk about variety, it's because all the colours of your food do different things. Now, my favourites are the purples. There's not that many purple foods out there, but purple foods are incredible for your brain. So if you've got some red cabbage or beetroot, stick that in your food. Um, blueberries, things like that, because they're very, very protective of the brain. Your red foods, I've got peppers and tomatoes, really rich in lycopenes. They are amazing for brain health, amazing for protecting against skin cancers, but red foods are great for the heart. Your orange foods, I've got loads of orange pepper in here. Your orange foods are fabulous for your lungs, your eyes. They're quite anti-cancerous as well. Yellow foods, I've got sweet corn, but you can do yellow peppers or melon and things like that. Fabulous for beauty. Um, if you've got white foods, um, I've got some chickpeas here, um, but garlic, white cauliflower, things like that. Fabulous for your immune system. We all hear about people like eating cloves of garlic and stuff. It's white foods are very, very good for the immune system. So in winter, you want to be trying to get as many of those in as possible. And then green foods are great for detoxification, cleaning the body out, feeding the liver, as well as loads of other things, all the cruciferous vegetables with the iron and um, natural folate and things like that. So all of our foods do such wonderful, wonderful things. So of course, 30 varieties a week is tricky. But that's where we need to be aiming. So it can't just be the peas, broccoli, carrots, peas, broccoli, carrots. You've got to be going for different things all the time. Again, that's why we like the health hack of using the capsules, because it's it's your whole rainbow of colour. It's your artichokes and your bilberries and your pomegranates, not the stuff you have Monday to Friday. So think about portions, think about variety. And when you have your beautiful jars made up, they're going to look like a rainbow of colour. You're going to have your greens, your oranges, your yellows, your purples. It's all in there. And then the final two is thinking about how fresh it is, where it's sourced from, because obviously so many of our fruits and vegetables now are so nutritionally depleted, but covered in pesticides, herbicides. So obviously trying to shop cheap at local farmers markets is going to be so much better than the supermarket. And also try and cook your food al dente, because um, we know that anything living, once it gets boiled, it dies. And of course, um, you know, we want to try and keep our whole foods as whole as possible because then you've got all of those lovely nutrients and vitamins and minerals and living enzymes. So what you've got in front of you is lots of raw, lovely, crunchy goodness. So let's get on with building them up. Um, like I said, check out our website. We do loads of different events. There's a free giveaway on there for healthy hacks for um, more energy. If you fill that out, you'll get onto the mailing list. 
and we can send you out recipes and all of our events that are happening and things like that. So please do be sure to check that out. So what we're gonna do with salads in a jar, the absolute key is going from wet to dry. You don't want your crisp salad leaves sitting in all your olive oil because it's gonna look like a lump of mush by tomorrow. So we always start with the dressing and that goes in the bottom of your jar. We're basically making an upside down salad, okay? So for my dressing, I always do the simple one on these calls, which is basically olive oil, balsamic and honey. And I basically do two lots of olive oil to one lot of balsamic. So I do 200 ml of olive oil for my five jars and 100 ml of balsamic. Um, so I never used to measure it out, but I've become very good and very conscientious about measuring it out. Because people are like, how much do you put in? I'm like, I don't know. I just make it up as I go. Now, Jeanette is on the call. Jeanette is the queen of salad dressings. I mean, you can Google great salad dressing ideas, but Jeanette is going to share a couple of her favourites with you. Hey, everyone. Um, I love different salad dressings to just make so you try the one Chloe is suggesting tonight just a really simple one and then next time you come to do your jars um you know you can do them on your own next time play around with some different salad dressings because they really do um yeah change the flavor of everything so the first one I love is a passion fruit dressing um so you need three passion fruits just scoop out all the flesh um, three tablespoons of olive oil a teaspoon of honey a teaspoon of coriander and some salt and pepper and that makes a really lovely sweet passion fruity um, dressing and and also when you've layered up your salad when you come to tip it out into your bowl the next day all the dressing will just sort of drizzle over the top so that's a really lovely one to try and the other one I love is tahini um, and just play around with the quantities I just use olive oil some rice wine vinegar some fresh garlic maple syrup a little bit of smoked paprika and some water just to loosen it up and to make sure it's you know to keep it runny so those are a couple of others you can try and my absolute favorite is just to do a really simple saute dressing so just with peanut butter with lime juice rice wine vinegar olive oil bit of salt and pepper um and that goes really nice if you're doing um if you do like a shredded salad with things like uh shredded carrots you know you might put some peanuts in there so make you know you could do like a thai type salad one one time amazing Thanks, darling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are the queen of it. I'm just your bog standard balsamic girl. But um, another, another ones that I really like are adding in just olive oil, sweet chili sauce that you get from the stores and a whole lemon, the zest and the lime. So you basically have a lime sweet chili and just a French vinaigrette one, just some Dijon mustard, some lemon, a little bit of um, red wine vinegar maybe and olive oil but literally if you google up like homemade salad dressings there's just so many out there and you can just as Jeanette said I mean you can't go wrong with chucking garlic into stuff or chucking chili or coriander into things um and lime you know you can just really play around with it so I've got the dressing here so like I said I did 200 ml of olive oil 100 ml of balsamic and then probably a tablespoon of honey just to thicken it up and give it that nice sweet um flavor so I've done a tablespoon of honey whisked it up I actually went and stuck in some garlic granules as well which I've got some builders over at the moment they're probably not going to like me over the next few days I'll be very stinky but I do love garlic so what you're going to do is you're going to get your jars and you're basically going to line the bottom of them you don't want them swimming in in oil or dressing but you're just going to put it in just enough to coat the bottom of your jars so you're going to do that to all five. I like to, instead of doing one jar at a time, I like to layer up my jars as I go, you know? So, you know, one ingredient at the bottom of the wall, then the next ingredient, kind of like a um, factory kind of, what's it called, conveyor belt system. But yeah, lots of nice dressing. I've got a little bit left over, which will be great because you can just make up a salad later on in the week and pour it over. 
Um, okay, so is everybody okay and keeping up? Unmute yourself if you've got any questions or you're unsure about something. All good in the hood? Awesome. So the next thing is, so you want to keep colour different. You don't want like green, green, green. You want to make it all different. But it's really important at the bottom of your jars while you sort of soak up the dressing, you put the things that aren't going to change texture or kind of flavour. So you don't, like I said, you don't want your lovely crisp salad leaves at the bottom or your grated carrot at the bottom because they'll go mushy. What I like to do at the bottom is put my pulses and my sort of protein and complex carbs. So I actually roast, I, I bought, I did some quinoa tonight in some vegetable stock. So I'm gonna put my quinoa at the bottom, probably followed by my crisp raw broccoli. I've done little tiny um, broccoli florets. So if you've got the cauliflower, that would work as well, just to give the color difference. But you basically do a dollop of a sort of dessert spoon in each jar. So I would probably do, if you've got rice or quinoa or buckwheat or something like that, I'd put them in the bottom and then maybe your pulses or something really crisp and firm like the broccoli. Because that raw broccoli is not going to go mushy. No fear. And that's what people do wrong and they're like, oh, I made up my jars and you have a look and it's like leaves all at the bottom and it's like, no, it's got to be done a certain way. It suits my OCD brilliantly. I just love being all, when I used to do the, the events and people would come and just dump their bowls everywhere and it's me like going around putting them all in order so that you can actually just go around the table in a loop. I do them at a, a yoga retreat every month and it's just fabulous. We can have up to sort of 20 people. It's such a nice thing to do, you know, and it's so important if you've got children at home, it doesn't matter their age, you know, to actually have them helping you prep and layer up the jars because I think it's so important that we teach our children the importance of nourishing their bodies and looking after them. At the B plan, you can actually get, so if an adult goes on the capsules, you can actually get free chewables for children or capsules up to the age of 21 because we're all about encouraging healthy living for families. It's not just about one person in the family, it's the whole family benefiting. So children can get it free up to 21. But what we love about this is like on a Sunday evening, for example, you could be there chopping it all as a family. And I've had so many people say, oh my God, you know, my daughter's 15, she's taking them to school now. Every Sunday she makes up her jars and she takes them into school. And now her friends are copying because they're like, that looks amazing. So much nicer than your limp sandwich or your, you know, and you can just take them to work, stick them in the fridge. We've got husbands now taking them instead of just having a coffee and a, <laughs> And a bagel or something so it's great so yeah so mine I've just got my quinoa then I've got my broccoli and then I'm just doing I've got some nice chickpeas because it's really nice to have because they're a really good source of protein and um yeah pulses are great a lot of good stuff packed in the pulses you could do like red kidney beans or pinto beans for a bit of colour switch up the colour a little bit but I'm also a sucker for when I get my dress when I do turn my salad out I love just putting a big dollop of hummus on the top or a bit of a chickpea feed and they're so good roasted in the oven if you get some chickpeas tiny tiny bit of oil some salt and some spices just roast them they pop like popcorn in the oven and they're just amazing they taste so good right so mine looks a bit like this at the moment. So let's go for some bright color. I'm gonna put in the purple cabbage because the purple cabbage isn't gonna change much. Neither is your purple beetroot. So pick one and go for the sort of nice bright thing. I mean, I love red cabbage. I'm sort of a bit obsessed with it, but it's just funny that a red cabbage looks like a brain <laughs> and your purple foods are so vital for your brain health. They're now sort of saying, you know, eat blueberries to prevent Alzheimer's and dementia, but we need to be doing the purples by 40. It's not, it's not enough to wait till you're 70 to do it. You know, everything that happens in our body ha happens over a long time. We don't, you know, suddenly wake up with this ailment or that. It's been like a little fire burning away. And um, a lot of the sort of anti-aging specialists and people that we've listened to over the years sort of say, you know, we need to be practicing prevention every day, 10 years before something happens. And that's what we do at VPAN. It's all about, you know, peace of mind, being proactive with your health, 
investing in your health every day and just, you know, taking the right steps. And something like this is just so easy. And like I said, it's so much nicer and more nutritious and filling than a sandwich from Boots on the meal deal with your packet of crisps and your, you know, because we've all done that. Um, okay, I'm going to do um, some nice crunchy cucumber next. Don't be afraid to <laughs> get in there with your jars. You don't want them all light and fluffy. You want to pack it in as much as possible to get as much air out and also make them as big and tasty as possible. So, yeah, don't be afraid to get in there and push things down a little bit to make more room. Because if you're like me, you're going to forget to leave room for your nice crisp leaves at the top. I've been doing these for about four years. Very rarely leave enough room for my leaves. I'm not the master of quantity guessing. And then with any leftovers in my bowl, making up a salad <laughs> for tomorrow. So, yeah. Okay, what have we got? Okay, so I've got my white and I've got my green, I've got my purple, got more greens. So I'm going for yellow sweet corn. We haven't got any yellow. My son's obsessed with rainbows. He would be very upset because I'm not doing the colours in order. <laughs> if you have any comments or questions or anything, please don't you know, be shy. Just um, unmute yourself and ask. Yeah. I have to say that the relief of doing this, it's like tomorrow, you know, when you're busy with work and life and stuff, and then you're like, oh, what's for lunch? Oh, I've got my salad jars, yay! It's like Christmas come early. Such a good feeling. Just to open the fridge and there they are. Um, right, I'm doing peppers next. I've mainly got orange, a little bit of red in there. So, and obviously now it doesn't really matter what order they go in because the dressing's not going to interfere with the with the crispness of anything. In one of my jars, I've actually run out of room. That shows how bad I am at the layering. The sense, Jeanette, that you're probably very exact with yours, aren't you, girl? Very organized with your jars. Oh, and Jeanette, um, inspired me with the pomegranate seeds like putting pomegranate in there that lovely red fr I mean fruit gosh when we used to do ours and we'd have like I think I once crammed about 26 people into my kitchen and it was like what's everyone gonna bring like you know I talk about these 30 varieties oh my god it was like we'd bring like raisins um apple chunks you can bring like pumpkin seeds and sesame seeds and things like that chopped herbs fresh basil and coriander and mint People could, if you're not like, because we sort of advocate sort of whole foods and sort of vegan diets when we do our reset, 10 day reset programs and stuff. But you could have feta in there. I would probably say to keep the meat out and just add it at the end on top of your salad. Like if you wanted some poached salmon or some tuna, I wouldn't add in like eggs and cheese and that sort of more active stuff into the jars. You can just add them on afterwards. But get adventurous. Like you could do grapes and pear and walnuts and kind of make some really different you know fruit salads watermelon's a big one um, I know a lot of people do watermelon with feta and stuff like that but yeah just have a play around you know you could do plums with a bit of cinnamon and things like that so you can really just play with whatever flavors you like um okay my final additions oh I'm doing oh I haven't done my tomatoes oh no all my leaves my leaves are currently in a Tupperware pot because I have a tower garden, so I literally grow all my own leaves. So I've given the tower garden a haircut. And I've got all my fresh organic leaves here. They're just going to have to go on my salad when I make when I pour it out on a plate. So I've not got enough room. I have failed. I get excited. I love I love food so much. And I love colourful food and I love fresh food that doesn't come out of a plastic packet. And I just get so excited when it, it's like, oh, God, I love tomatoes. I put a bit more in, put a bit more of this in. And I've even been very overambitious. I was going to put in, I did some homemade olives 
at the weekend when we had friends over, I just get the plain olives in the shop and then I, I just put in garlic oil and chilies and herbs and everyone's like, oh, these olives are amazing. And I'm like, I made them myself. So I was going to put them in, but again, I just have to be sprinkled. So my final thing to go in is the tomatoes. And then after that, you want to put your salad leaves and you need to crush them in, push them in, don't be shy. And then at the end, you could sprinkle your seeds. And seeds, guys, are so good because you need loads of omegas. Omegas are so fundamental for your heart, your brain, your eyes, menopause, hormones, anti-aging, immune system. We have our own omegas, um, a plant-based omega. But what we also have is like in the mornings, I have a smoothie because we do plant-based smoothies. It's nearly empty, but I have my own little jar where I just put in flax seeds, chia seeds and linseeds. And we just sprinkle it into our smoothie every day. So this would be sprinkled on top of our salad, on top of our muesli. So it's a really good way to just get more omegas into the diet as well. If you're not using, you know, a plant-based supplement or a fish oil or something like that. Okay, how are we doing? Look at that, bang on time. Now, Jeanette, you're going to be chief photographer as well. That is one full jar. Ta-da. So my full jar is, just to recap, the salad dressing, then it's the quinoa, raw broccoli, chickpeas, raw cabbage, sweet corn, cucumber, red and orange peppers, peas, and tomatoes. I did cherry tomatoes. You don't want to shake it up, don't take it to work and let it swing around in the back. But yeah, and then if I had room, I wasn't such a piggy, I would have crammed in loads of lettuce leaves, rocket leaves, anything like that. You could put some basil in, coriander on the top. And then basically, when you come to eat, take your lid off, get your plate, Pour it upside down. You've got all your salad leaves on the bottom and your dressing falls over the top. Pop whatever you want on top of that, poached egg or a big dollop of hummus or just have it plain. You will be really full, really happy <laughs> and full of goodness as well. And the lovely thing about it is every mouthful is different as well. You know, instead of just the same taste, you'll be like, oh, that one had more cabbage than this one. You know, get your seeds on top as well because you want to keep them nice and Firm, neatly on built, and then we're going mushy. But yeah, that is salad in a jar. None of my lids fit. There we go. Um, I'd love to see. Oh, Helen's used celery. Nice one, Helen. Um, Joe said with the tower garden, I do really well with supplementing my portions. Absolutely, because it's growing like crazy. Um, and yeah, you literally need to keep eating to keep up with it. So you have to have salad with everything or have a smoothie. And I put kale in mine, and French sorrel and parsley. Um, Jen's had a great day. She's done seven or eight portions. Um, Helen, olives don't do so well in the jar unless in oil. Mine were in oil, but um, oh yeah, Beth, roasted veg. You know, Sunday night, if you've had a roast and you've got all your roasted veg left over, stick them in your salad jar. What a nice idea. Um, George said, me and Chris do them weekly now are so easy to not have to think about lunch. Also keeps the food shop cost down as the whole week is taken care of with one night of prep. Totally agree, George. So hopefully that's everybody happy. I would love for Jeanette to get a photo. Um, I could only get plastic jars today. That's absolutely fine, Lisa. So all I would say is try your... Yeah, they should be okay. Just make sure the lids are on super tight and things like that. But your um, hobby craft, do these jars for six for six pound 50. You can just go to hobby craft. Places like, um, you know, the little kilner jars. So I've got one more of the kilner jar. These little ones, these are fantastic. They're such a good size. I absolutely love them. Plus they look pretty as well. So ones like that would be really good as well. But yeah, I'd love to get a photo, Jeanette, if you can, in the sort of gallery view. If everyone's happy to hold up a jar or two and, um, yeah, and grab a, grab a photo. Let us know when you're ready, Jeanette. Okay, I'm ready. 
Shake, 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 Sonata. Okay. Smile. Okay. Fab. Thank you so much. The other one um, that's nice to put on top, because um, obviously, you know, we will need to add some protein is grilled halloumi. So if you're doing a barbecue this weekend, add in some grilled halloumi and then you could do some grilled asparagus and courgette um, no. as well. Whereas those two things might go a bit soft in the jars, whereas you have some crunchy, crispy veg on top that will go really nicely as well. Squeaky cheese. Love squeaky cheese. Yeah. So good um guys thank you so much for joining i love it that's half an hour and you've got your lunches or dinners sorted for a whole week um we will be doing these every month because it's just nice to prep together and it's 30 minutes of chit chat um so please look out if you go onto the website fill out for the free pdf you will get updates to all of our events we've got amazing guest speakers we actually have one on wednesday night at 8 30 with Destiny Krugsgaard, and she is a chiropractor talking about how to balance your nervous system. And she is amazing, been practicing for years and a total fountain of knowledge. So how to get the best out of the nervous system in the body. So that's on at 8.30 on the same Zoom on Wednesday evening. And then one next Wednesday at 8.30. Are you an asset or a liability? How the way you can think can literally turn your life around. So yeah, lots of great stuff. We love to help and inspire. So yeah, look forward to hearing from you and thank you so much for being part of this tonight. And um, 18 people on, so nice. Thank you so much. Lots of love, have a good evening. Oh, and post about it, tag us, tag me, tag Jeanette or whoever invited you on. Please tag us in your posts. Let us know how your salads went. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, Jeanette, for helping. Lots of love, guys. Cheers.